coffee. Coffee no! <laughs> There shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. One man, one microphone, one mission. One message. True News, the only newscast reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And now for the most powerful hour on radio, here is End Time Newsman, Rick Wiles. This is True News, the news program that reports the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help us God. I'm Rick Wiles. Welcome to one hour of uncensored news, views, and commentary. My guest today is a Syrian Orthodox Church pastor who will tell us what Syrian Christians are experiencing these days ever since the West decided to bring down the Syrian government. Next Monday, our world band radio affiliate, WWCR, will switch shortwave radio frequencies. Our 6 p.m. Eastern broadcast on WWCR will be on frequencies 6115 and 5070. So this is your final notice if you listen to True News at 6 p.m. on WWCR. The uh, new frequency starting Monday uh, will be 6115. The alternative frequency will be 5070. No change for World Harvest Radio at 9 p.m. Eastern. A second important announcement. Uh, Donations to True News have been lagging throughout October. Next Thursday is the 31st of the month. But my faith in God assures me that he will speak to his sons and daughters and they will obey his voice. And uh, more than enough money will be donated to True News by the end of next week to cover our expenses. I'm not worried about it. It is finished in Christ. It's done. And uh, we are complete in him. There is no lack for the man or woman who seeks the Lord. Psalm 34 declares, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. O fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. And that promise is for you too. And whatever you're facing, you need to stand on the word of God. There is no lack. There is no lack if you fear the Lord and seek the Lord. That's a promise from your Heavenly Father. Now, you may give online at truenews.com. Click on support, then click donate. You may want to set up an online account where you can keep track of your online donations. And you may choose to click the box that says, make this a recurring donation. This will allow you to automatically donate Each month, whatever amount you desire to pledge. And, of course, you can cancel that pledge at any time. PayPal users should enter support at truenews.com. And if you prefer to mail a check or money order, address your letter to True News, Post Office Box 690069, Vero Beach, Florida. The zip code is 32969. And please consider donating a a portion of your precious metals. You can send it via U.S. Postal Service to our post office box. I strongly suggest, however, that you insure the package for the value of whatever you're sending and uh, get the uh, delivery confirmation also. That way you have peace of mind knowing that it arrived at our office. And if the package uh, of precious metals is too large to ship, I'll tell you what, I'll personally drive to your house and pick it up and deliver it back to True News. How's that for an offer? So if you uh, you want to give something to True News, uh, please please get in touch with us. By the way, our office telephone number is 772-569-8880. And you can email us at support at True News or 
info at truenews.com. Let's look at the news headlines. A powerful earthquake struck off the coast of Japan today. Japanese geological officials said the quake registered magnitude 7.3. The tremor was centered approximately 170 miles off the coast from Fukushima. The quake was felt 300 miles away in Tokyo. A tsunami warning was issued for a long stretch of Japan's northeastern coast, including Fukushima. Japanese TV network NHK reported that Tokyo Electric Power Company ordered its workers at Fukushima to remove or to move to higher ground because of the possibility of a tsunami striking the crippled nuclear reactors. TEPCO said uh, as of um, a few minutes ago, they had not detected any spike in radiation levels. As Japanese officials cope with another earthquake and possible tsunami, they are also bracing for a severe tropical storm expected to make landfall on Saturday morning. Residents of Izo-Ushima Island were ordered to swiftly evacuate today. TEPCO is rushing to take measures to prevent radioactive water and outdoor barriers from overflowing. When the tropical storm arrives, radioactive water in the barriers around the tanks has been accumulating after a series of heavy rains since mid-September. Today, TEPCO rushed in 19 additional water pumps and 12 vehicles, including fire trucks, to uh, transfer that contaminated water to holding tanks and underground pools, the same tanks and pools that have been leaking tons of contaminated water into the Pacific for quite some time. Here's the latest from the NSA. The NSA monitored the private telephone conversations of at least 35 world leaders. The spy agency was provided with their confidential telephone numbers by an official in another U.S. agency. A confidential memo provided to London's Guardian by Edward Snowden reveals that the NSA encourages U.S. officials to share their confidential contact list with the NSA so that they could be added to their vast surveillance system. One official handed over 200 numbers, including those of 35 world leaders. The, the memo was from the NSA Signal Intelligent Intelligence Directorate, and it referred to the White House, the State Department, and the Pentagon as the NSA's customers. German Chancellor Angela Merkel and French President Francois Hollande both confronted Mr. O in separate telephone calls to the White House. France and Germany are demanding meetings with U.S. officials before the end of this year. They want a new set of rules to govern the collection of intelligence information. Mr. Olan said France's relationship with America is at stake. Mrs. Merkel said Germany has lost trust in America. Uh, foreignpolicy.com reported that Germany and Brazil will, will ask the United Nations to restrain the United States. Let me tell you where this is going. Uh, this scandal is going to result in the United States losing control of the Internet. It's going to be transferred to the United Nations. Now, today, Paris newspaper Le Mans reported that Israel's Mossad hacked into former French President Nicolas Sarkozy's communications last year. Uh, USA Today reported that an international think tank warned that Iran could produce enough weapons-grade uranium to build a nuclear bomb within a month. Meanwhile, former Israeli Defense Force Intelligence Chief General Ad Amos Yadlin said that the next several months would be Israel's last opportunity to carry out a military attack on Iran. He told New Republic magazine that Israel must make a decision soon whether to hit Iran or live with a nuclear Islamic Republic. General Yadlin said if American leaders perceive Iran is not serious about negotiating, he thinks the U.S. would accept an Israeli military attack. Mr. Yadlin expects the decision to be made to attack Iran by late 2013 or early 2014. And Roman Catholic Bishop Thomas Pabrocki blocked rainbow sash movement activists from praying inside his church for same-sex marriage rights. He said it is blasphemous. I'm Rick Wiles. You're listening to True News. I'm going to take a break, and when we return, I'll have a Syrian Orthodox Church pastor here who will give us a a first-hand report on what is happening to the body of Christ in Syria because of the turmoil. 
You're listening to True News. Reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is True News. This is Max McLean. What did God foresee in the last days? Listen to the Bible from Jude 1. In the last times, there will be scoffers who will follow their ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them. To others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. From Jude 1, listen to the Bible. It's great for the soul. You're listening to True News, your Christian alternative source for global news, analysis, and commentary. I'm Rick Wiles. The nation of Syria and its president, Bashar al-Assad, have been front and center in the world news headlines over the past two years. If you believe President Barack Obama and UK Prime Minister David Cameron and the mainstream news media... President Assad is an evil man whose government is terrorizing the people of Syria. Is that true? Are we getting a balanced picture of the man and the country? And what about the Christians in Syria? How are they treated? I thought it would be a good idea to ask a Christian pastor, originally from Syria, who personally knew President Assad. Pastor Malitios Zafarin is the senior shepherd of St. George Orthodox Church in New Kensington, Pennsylvania. St. George is part of the Orthodox Church, whose apostolic roots trace directly to the first century early church in Antioch, Syria. The church's website is stgeorgeorthodox.org. Master Zafarin, welcome to True News. Thank you. Well, glad to have you here. First of all, I know... Uh, as a as a Westerner, an American, I I I, I probably um, uh, mangled your name. So why don't you say it correctly so everybody knows the correct pronunciation? Melitius Zafaran. All right, I was close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're so glad to have you here, Pastor. Thank and you. Um, one of our listeners uh, suggested that you be part of our our program, and so we appreciate. Uh, that person recommending you to to be on the program. Well, for, first of all, um, you, so you were born and 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 raised in Syria. Yes, I was born in Syria, and I spent more than thirty years. Uh, I came uh, to um, the states uh, two thousand five. So I was born in sixty six, and I spent all the time sixty six to two thousand five in Syria. Okay. And when did you become a pastor in the Orthodox Church? Uh, I became a pastor in 1996 in Damascus, Syria also, and I served there as a priest for St. Michael Church for eight years. All right, so you were ordained as a priest in the Orthodox Church in 1996. And did you say, were you in Damascus? Yeah, I served in Damascus at St. Michael Church in Damascus between 1996 and 2005. I've always wanted to visit Damascus. It's uh, it's what is the oldest continuous city in the world. Yes, yes. And and really, you know, uh, there is something special about uh, Damascus. When you will go there, you will see the uh, uh, the history living there. You can see, you know, uh, the 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 love and the harmony between people uh, there in Syria. When you when you will walk in uh, the old streets of Damascus, where Saint Anania and all these. Uh, saints from the first century walked. Saint Paul, when he walked into Damascus, as uh, uh, as one of the Gentiles, uh, the the, the uh, uh, people who were against uh, Christianity, and there he baptized by Saint Anania, and he became the 
most important Christian preacher for the world. So uh, something uh, amazing about yes. that also. Yes. I mean, here, here in America, if, if, if a building is 200 years old, we consider it very old. Yeah, why well, we have some uh, some uh, buildings, you know, uh, two thousand before Christ <laughs> there in Syria. Two thousand years before Christ. Yeah, yeah, we have, you have buildings in in Damascus in Syria four thousand years old. Yeah. Oh, that is uh, fascinating to me. I'd love to go see it. Um, let's let's take some time. I I, I want you to talk to our audience about about the the Christian community, the, the body of Christ in Syria, it, 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 it dates back to the first century, to the apostles. Yeah, yeah, of course. It, is, it went back to the first century because as, as we read in the um, uh, Bible, in the New Testament, at the act of the apostles, when the uh, disciples of Jesus Christ at the Pentecost Day, uh, um, received the Holy Spirit. There were people from Damascus. There, they they were witness for the Pentecost, and when they went back to their uh, city, of course, because they were in Jerusalem for the big feast, and they went, they uh, were witness uh, for the Pentecost. Where they went back to Damascus. And they established the first Christian community after they learned from the apostles. So it it was the first century. And also, as I mentioned um, uh, before, that St. Paul, when he went from Jerusalem to Damascus, he went there to uh, capture the Christian there and bring them back to uh, Jerusalem so the uh, council of the uh, Jews will uh, judge them there and they will kill them. And before he entered Damascus, uh, Jesus Christ appeared to him. And uh, here for your knowledge and for our beloved listeners, that place where Jesus Christ uh, appeared to uh, St. Paul uh, at the uh, suburb of Damascus, it's only two miles from my town where I born and I raised. Uh, and we have a, a, a monastery uh, of uh, St. Paul uh, there at that uh, place. So there St. Paul met Jesus Christ and he entered Damascus and in Damascus he uh, baptized, uh, he, he, he got his baptism from St. Anania, who was the first bishop of Damascus. And that's all, you know, the first century, the first 25, 30 years of the uh, Christian uh, preaching. So uh, the, the Christianity in Damascus is from the beginning, the beginning of the church, from the Pentecost uh, uh, time. And uh, they used to live there with uh, other other people, and they con- continue that till now. Until now, you have, as I said, you, you can see the harmony, uh, the the life between the Christian and uh, others uh, in, in in Syria. Uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor, here you know, here in the United States, I I grew up in an area uh, in in Maryland where there was uh, m- uh, there were many historical sites to the founding of America, to the the history of this country, and so I grew up around it, and it was just natural. It was part of my life, you know, to go places where uh, George Washington had been. Uh, to where battles had taken place, and so it was just—it was just a natural part of my life growing up. In your situation, you and other Syrian Christians grew up in a place where it was just natural to drive or walk past the place where Saint Paul had yeah. preached yes. or, or walked. How did that shape your life? How did that affect you? Uh, uh, 
You, you know, uh, growing up in these uh, um, uh, places and around these places, and as you said, walking in the same street that Sam Paul uh, walked or w- the place that he uh, got his baptism or the place where he escaped from the Jews, you know, when they were trying to uh, uh, capture him, uh, you know, you feel that you are in that that time, in the biblical time, you, you are around with the uh, saints, uh, and and you you feel that this land is a holy, holy land. Uh, it it will give you uh, some kind of peace in your uh, soul, in your mind, when you feel that uh, uh, God uh, talked to uh, the prophets and to the disciples here in this uh, place, the same place you are standing, God appeared to St. Paul and he led him to Christianity. You, you feel that uh, grace and that uh, peace uh, in your life. Um, and uh, you know it, it is it is a big witness to to, to our uh, belief uh, also as Christian. Now, the Orthodox Church obviously is part of the one holy Catholic Apostolic Church, and the Orthodox Church uh, believes in apostolic secession, meaning that each pastor or each priest. Uh, has been ordained by a bishop who was ordained by another bishop going all the way back to the beginning of the church. Yes. In your case, how how um, complete is are the records? Is there is there a written record of the complete line of bishops down through the centuries who laid hands on other bishops? Yes, yes, we we still have that uh, line from the beginning, from the apostle uh, apostle time till now. I mean, uh, you, you, know, re- you li- there literally is a written record. Yes, I mean, from yes. from starting with your ordination, going to the from the bishop who laid hands on you, that you can trace it in writing all the way back to to the apostles. The apostles, yes. That's and amazing, that, and that it, it is it is easy, and also anyone can Google it by uh, having the uh, lines of the uh, Antiochian Orthodox patriarchs, and you can find it because you know uh, God uh, God rest his soul, our late patriarch Ignatius the Fourth, who uh, just uh, passed away last. A year, a year ago, he is the one who ordained me as a, a deacon, and you can go from that patriarch to the apostle time, and you you will find all the line. Even you, uh, you can Google it and find it uh, online. Um, let, let's. Uh, I want to ask you about um, uh, life in Syria. How how are well, first of all how big is the the Christian community of Syria? The Christian community in Syria um, now it is around nine uh, percent uh, only. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it, it is it's now less. Uh, than like when I was there in my uh, you know uh, childhood uh, be- between the seventy and eighty the Christian uh, population were fourteen percent now uh, you know it's it's going down because of the immigration uh, many Christians they Im- immigrate from uh, Syria to um, uh, Australia mm-hmm. to, to all over the world, and also, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the 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 problem of uh, not having uh, uh, kids like the Christian now they have only uh, one two kids, mm-hmm. and that's it. While uh, you know the the other people they like to have uh, six eight ten twelve uh, kids. So mm-hmm. that 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 made the. Uh, percentage of the Christian in Syria less now. From from the time of the first century church until the arrival of Islam, 
what percentage of Syria do you think was was Christian at its height? Uh, you know, it, it, it was the uh, almost the majority of the uh, people there were uh, Christian. Uh, we can say about 80% of them, because we have Jews, but we still have Jews living in, in Syria, especially in uh, Damascus. So uh, b- before the Islam, uh, Syria uh, were uh, uh, Christian and Jews, and the majority was uh, uh, Christian. So at one point, maybe the at the peak, perhaps as many as 80% of the Syrians were, were Christian. Yes. And of course, uh, with the arrival of Islam, um, those numbers uh, started to decline. Uh, yes, to decline. But th- there were still, you know, a good uh, percentage of Christian uh, at that time. Even you know, during the uh, 11th century, when the uh, um, uh, Umayyads were in uh, Damascus, as the Umayyad caliph in damascus uh, his uh, his uh, money keeper the the treasurer of his uh, uh, government were a christian and he who was uh, sergeon uh, of damascus who who is the father of saint john of damascus one thing that i i really admire about the Orthodox Christians throughout the world is that they have this rich knowledge of history going back to the apostolic times and uh, they have they have in their records uh, uh, great stories of faith that that the Protestant churches don't know anything about now these these are not these are not stories that are from biblical canon, but these are these are stories. These are accounts of of the apostles, of the martyrs, of the saints, of great feats of of, of strength, uh, not strength, but faith in in Christ. Things that were done in the name of the Lord, miracles that were done by the Lord. Uh, and, and I love reading these stories. I, yeah, yeah. I have a hist- I have a I have a lot of books uh, from from uh, various parts of the world, and I love reading these stories. What are what are some of the s- stories that you know about th- the Christians from centuries ago in Syria that that you know the Protestants in America don't know anything about? We don't know who lived and what they did and what miracles God did. Can you share some of those with us? Yeah, like I, I, I will tell you now a story about the uh, monastery of uh, Sednaya, which is um, about uh, f- 15 to 16 uh, uh, miles from uh, Damascus, that uh, convent of the Holy Mother. Uh, this monastery built in the 6th century, uh, and the story of this um, uh, convent, how they built it, they um, they say that uh, Empire Justinian was uh, going in a, a, a hunt trip, uh, hunting uh, uh, deers, and uh, there in a place uh, out of Damascus, he uh, was away from his. Uh, group uh, and looking for water and there he saw a deer so he followed that deer to hunt it and that deer was running till it reached a top of hell and when he went there and tried to shoot that deer it directly changed to the uh, and it appeared like the uh, 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 mother of God, the Theotokos uh, Saint Mary, and when he saw Saint Mary, he uh, 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 kneeled down and she asked him to build a church on her name on that hell, and this is what he uh, did, and from that time we have this uh, convent of 
St. Mary and St. Naya, which goes back to the 6th century, and it's still now. And uh, now, unfortunately, it it, it, it hits by a, a rocket last summer from these rebels who are uh, 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 now trying to destroy all uh, this Christian history in uh, Syria. Yes, and uh, the destruction has been quite uh, widespread. I, I, I was on an airplane uh, trip one time, and uh, the the gentleman uh, seated was the uh, patriarch of the of the uh, Orthodox Church of Ethiopia, mm-hmm. and and he spoke uh, he spoke some English, and I, I had a wonderful conversation with him as we flew across the United States, and I uh, I was I was asking him questions. Uh, he was a Coptic uh, Christian. Yes, because the Church of uh, Ethiopia, uh, they they are under the Coptic Church. Yes, and so I was I was asking him questions, and and he he was trying to explain to me uh, his position. And again, you know, he was the, he was the patriarch of, of the Coptic Church of of Ethiopia, and so he was asking me. He said, "Do you know? Do you know?" Uh, Book of Acts, chapter eight. I said yes, yes, you know. And he says, uh, you know, Philip. I said yes, Philip. And he said, I am the pastor of Philip's church. And I, you know, I just uh, I sat there for a moment, uh, uh, speechless, uh, thinking about the man I was sitting beside. Uh, that that he was presiding over the the church that Philip had started. 2000 years ago but i asked him um i asked him what they were preaching and 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 he smiled and he he you know he 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 told me uh, uh, jesus is coming and uh, and i said that's what we believe and 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 i asked him about miracles i said are are there are you having miracles in the church and he smiled he said yes miracles and i said what kind of miracles he said the blind are seeing the cripple are walking and it, you know, Pastor, we don't hear these stories here in the United States, but I I know this is taking place. I saw a video several months ago on a on a, a TV show where an Egyptian Coptic uh, church service was underway, and a Muslim woman, very distraught, brought her 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 blind son, and he was demon possessed. It was obvious just looking at him. He was demon possessed, and he was blind. And she brought him into the Coptic Church. She was she was Muslim, and he was Muslim, but she was desperate. And the Coptic uh, priest uh, performed uh, an exorcism on him, yeah. at, and and he's quoting scripture. I mean, I couldn't understand. There was uh, there was an, uh, an interpreter who was saying this is what he's saying, but the boy's eyes were open. He was delivered. The devil was ca- cast out, and the ch- the boy's eyes were open, and he could see. And that church broke out into just rapturous praise of God. Pastor, before this war started inside Syria, generally, how how were the Christians treated in the country? You know, we, we we have we have our free life, our free worship. We have no problem uh, at all. You know, even we have no problem to build a hundred chairs every day. Uh, you know, we, we we have the freedom to 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 do anything and uh, uh, to worship the way that we like. Uh, you know. And also, there's a, a, a help from the government for us. Like I, I can tell you about my my church, my uh, the church which I used to uh, serve in Damascus, uh, Saint Michael Church. Uh, it is a ve- the smallest church in Damascus. It was the smallest church. It is the first floor in the uh, a building, living building. Uh, and we have uh, uh, nothing around the church to do the uh, processions during uh, the Palm Sunday or Good Friday. Uh, so if we we are going to do any procession, we have to do it in the streets. And every year, uh, Good Friday, 
Palm Sunday, during our procession, the uh, uh, police uh, station, they sent some police men to uh, uh, clear the road for us in front of the church, and uh, we, we do the procession out. So this is how much they, even the government... So the, know, government, the government was not persecuting Christians? Uh, no, 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 they, they, they are helping. Until now, they are uh, helping Christians. Yeah, now now there's, there is no problem between Christian and government. The, the problem now between these uh, rebels uh, who are fighting the government and the Christian. And how many of these rebels are from Syria, and how many are outsiders? You know, now, now uh, I... I because I'm not here, but I think, you know, and, uh, uh, with what I see every day with these pictures online and on the news, I believe that more than 90% of these rebels now uh, are not Syrian. You know, I, I, I can say that at the beginning, maybe there were Syrian people demonstrate, you know, out asking for some change uh, uh, in Syria. And that was the, 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 the beginning. They are Syrian uh, asking for some, some, some change. And there were uh, negotiation between the government and these people. Mm-hmm. But uh, after that, the, some of the out- outsiders uh, came in and get into that point. And that time, it, it turns from uh, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, demonstration in streets to uh, 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 battles with weapons and uh, uh, fire. So, uh, how, how, how do you feel and how do the other uh, Christians feel uh, th- about the fact that the United States is arming the rebels? Uh, you know, we, we all are disappointed because we, 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 uh, we don't think that if we, if, if we need to solve the problem and if we uh, need uh, to, to uh, uh, try to, uh, to have a peace in that area, it's not by weapons. It's it's not by sending weapons to any side. Are, are the Christians suffering now? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Like uh, uh, two days ago, eight eight young men uh, in Skalbiya, uh, uh, which is uh, the uh, northern part of Syria, they killed from these uh, rebels. Uh, to, uh, last month, the rebels, they went to, the, to Ma'lula. Uh, uh, Ma'lula is the uh, oldest uh, village, one of the oldest villages in uh, Syria, and the people in Malula till now they still uh, talk the uh, Arabic language, the language of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And the rebels they went there. Uh, the first uh, time they went there at uh, 4 a.m. Uh, they they were they went there. They pumped the uh, uh, Syrian army uh, checkpoints at the entrance of that. Uh, village, and they killed all the soldiers, and they went into the uh, streets uh, saying, Allahu Akbar, and they are asking people to convert to Islamic, uh, or they will kill. And now there's only, we have the convent of St. Thecla there also in uh, uh, that village, which is a very old uh, convent. Uh, we have nuns and we have orphanages there. Uh, they they, uh, uh, they put hands on the uh, the the convent. They uh, uh, kept the uh, nuns and the orphan girls as a prisoners for them. Uh, and uh, now we have n- nobody from uh, that village. They, all the people, they left their houses, they left their village, and uh, th- they they uh, uh, went to uh, our villages around or, uh, or Damascus, and many of them killed there. What, what are you hearing from Orthodox Christian priest in in Syria right now are are you getting feedback is, is are you getting 
calls, letters, emails? Is yeah, yeah. I'm always in touch with my my, my brother priests there uh, in in Syria, and uh, you know, uh, like uh, a daily news. I'm uh, in contact between like uh, uh, chatting or uh, skyping uh, mm-hmm. emails. Uh, yeah, and mm-hmm. always. Have, and, and what uh, are they saying? Uh, the, the, you, you know, it, it depends on uh, the, the the area. Like uh, now in Damascus, the city, the situation is good. But I have uh, some friends like in homes where uh, uh, now uh, we we don't have any 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 Christian in homes. Uh, the city they all left, and more than seven churches destroyed in homes. And, and the churches were destroyed, not by the government, but by the rebels that, by the rebels, yes. that are being uh, armed by the United States and the Western nations. Yes, and, and you can, you can uh, find their uh, pictures, the pictures or the videotape that they, uh, have, they themselves you know, uh, uh, took uh, for uh, these churches while they are destroying or they are uh, stepping on crosses or uh, the gospel, they put them and they step on them to, to show the people oh, okay uh, see we, we are trying to destroy the uh, Christianity and all the signs of uh, uh, Christianity here uh, here in this uh, city mm. you can yeah. find it uh, all over the internet when you lived in Syria did you personally know President Assad uh, you know I, I met I met him uh, a few times even before he was a president when he was a student at the uh, medicine school because I used to go to the college you know beside the medicine school where he used to study and he's you know just uh, a few years older than me so we we were together at the same time studying at the uh, mm-hmm. uh, college and he, he is a very gentle uh, humble uh, person very civilized very, very intelligent uh, person very lovely, you know, uh, uh, man. And uh, well, the, the began, news, the news media here describes him as a monster. Uh, unfortunately, you know, if you will go back a few years ago, two thousand five, two thousand six, the the news here they were talking about him as the best uh, 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 young president in the Middle East. So, so why why to, do you think the West has turned against him? Uh, you know, I I think there there is there is some uh, 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 some game uh, the the uh, Saudi Arabia and the Gulf area played because they they don't want Al Assad to be strong there and they don't want, especially now because the good relation between Syria and Iran so maybe that uh, that uh, thing make them fear about the Shiite uh, 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 relationship uh, to be strong in that area uh, against Saudi Arabia and the Gulf uh, uh, Emirates. I, uh, so I, I know that the, 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 the Assad family are Alawites. Yeah, and which is a part of Shia. Part of Shia, which would be Iran. Um Saudi Arabia is Sunni. Yes. And okay. they are not only uh, Sunni, they are fundamental Sunni. They are Wahhabiyin, which even the Sunni Muslims, uh, uh, they are against this uh, Wahhabi uh, group. Um, among, the, among the Syrian Muslims, are the majority of them Sunni or Shiite? No, Sunni. The majority of Syria is Sunni. They're, they're Sunni? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they would be they would be more oriented towards Saudi Arabia. Yeah, but they are not the the uh, type of Sunni like the Saudi Arabia because as I I mentioned the uh, the Sunni in Saudi Arabia even some of or most of the uh, uh, Sunni they refuse the 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 way that the Wahhabiyin uh, take in their uh, Islamic uh, uh, 
ideas and Islamic life. Okay. Um, there, is, uh, there is a prophecy in the book of Isaiah, chapter 17. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will become a ruinous heap. How, how do the Orthodox Christians in Syria interpret that scripture? You know, we believe that all, all these prophecies are uh, to, to come and to heaven, but nobody will know when is that going to, uh, to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, once in the uh, history, once in this time, uh, there, there will be a fulfillment of all these prophecies, but nobody. They don't know. They don't know when. But so, yeah. so, the, so the Christians in Syria know that this prophecy of Isaiah will come true someday. Because obviously, Damascus has not been destroyed. It, it's the oldest existing city in the world. It's never been destroyed. Yes. So, for this scripture to be, to come true, then sometime ahead, the city of Damascus will be destroyed. Um, but do, do the churches talk about the scripture? Or is it just uh, just assumed to be this is going to happen someday and, and there's no point in thinking about it? Yeah, yeah, we don't think about it because, as I said, we don't know the, the, the time or the, the when all these scripture will be uh, fulfilled mm-hmm. and uh, you know uh, and especially now in this time you you can talk about these scriptures or you will be uh, dis- you are going to discourage people there and to to give them uh, you know uh, the uh, that this is the end of your city this is the the the, the end of your life here in this city is something discouraging, you know. No, we, we always, we have hope, we, we, you know. We, we, we are here from thousands of years, and we still here, and we are going to continue till the uh, next coming of Jesus Christ. But when God's uh, uh, plans is going to heaven, it will happen, but we don't know when. But we will continue as Christian in this uh, area and in this land. We, so, we so the focus is on living for Christ today, and not worrying about when this prophecy is going to come true. Yes. Yeah. Um, before I let you go, tell me, uh, what do the Orthodox Christians in Syria believe about the last days and the second coming of Jesus Christ? You know, uh, we 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 all believe in it uh, biblically. You know, as as our Lord Jesus Christ said in the Bible, the the, the uh, second coming and uh, the the end of the world will will come one day, one time, but nobody knows when or how, because you will be working or you will be sleeping or you will be, and the. Uh, the, the 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 last uh, hour will come, and uh, it will be the end of the uh, world. Uh, this is how we read it at the uh, Bible, and this is how we uh, believe uh, of it. So we have uh, the same uh, belief as any other uh, mm-hmm. biblical uh, church. We we don't have. Uh, a special uh, teaching about the 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 mm-hmm. last uh, day of the world or the end of the world. I'm, I'm sure you became aware when you moved to the United States that many American Christians believe that Jesus will come back secretly in what they call a a secret pre tribulation rapture, and then seven years go by, and then he comes back to destroy the world. Is that the way the Orthodox Christians see it, or, or do they believe he comes back one time and that's it, it's over? 
Yeah, yeah of course. We, we, we believe, uh, as the Bible said, one time and that's over. Yeah, as, as he, he said in the uh, Bible that as the sun uh, rays from the east and it uh, have its lights all over the world, likewise is the coming of the Son of Man. This is what he said, and this is how we believe, like the sun. Nobody can say that the sun will not be seen for uh, all the people. No, we all will see, and all the people will gather, all the nations from all the world will see the coming of Son of Man, and they will be gathered together for the last judgment. When you moved to the United States in 2005, uh, what was your your first impression of the spiritual condition of America? Um, you know, I, I was shocked. I was shocked because uh, there we, we, we thought that America is a Christian uh, land and it's a Christian country. And this is something I did not find here, unfortunately. What did What did you find? Uh, people, they are too much away from a Christian life. You know, some some people they like sport more than like Christ. They 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 are they have loyalty to uh, to, to to teams and to sport and to other things more than they are loyal to to their Christian life. And was that was that an odd thing to you? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it shocked me. It shocked me because um, you know we 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 raised up, up as Christians there in Syria. Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, your church and your spiritual life is first before everything. Uh, here, uh, the church come last after. If I have time, I will go to church. But I have many things first to do. And if I'm done with all these things and I still have some time, I will go to church. In Syria, no. You know, uh, you know it's here, here uh, people, they, uh, they think that uh, uh, people there overseas uh, in, in Syria, they don't work and they have uh, plenty of time for that. Uh, they go to church or they say to you, oh, only the old people go to church. That's not right. You know, uh, like when I used to be um, at my town, uh, a Sunday school teacher, we used to have more than 200 elementary schools school uh, uh, kid coming to the, the, uh, Sunday school, uh, and this is a small town. And in Damascus, the city, we have uh, uh, thousands of, of kids. They are coming every week, and uh, they spend not like 40 or 50 minutes as we have here, our Sunday schools uh, meetings. We used to spend more than two hours. So the average Every Sunday week. school is two hours. Uh, uh, this is the minimum. Uh, and, then, and then, and then, how much is the average uh, worship service during the Eucharist? How long does that take? You know, the Eucharist is the same, and here in English or uh, in Arabic, we use the same Eucharist, which is uh, an hour service. And sometimes, you know, it's a little bit long. It, it depends on, uh, on uh, is it a feast day, and we have mm -hmm. more prayers, and also the other thing, also the uh, communion, because sometimes, you know, uh, some churches, because they have a big number of congregations, so they spend more than 20 minutes giving the communion while some churches like two or three minutes also that uh, uh, is something different but the the uh, liturgy itself it is uh, an hour service which liturgy does the church use? Uh, the, the church, uh, the uh, Antiochian church, we use two kinds of uh, uh, liturgy. Uh, the liturgy of San John Chrysostomos, uh, all Sundays uh, around the year, except the five Sundays uh, of the uh, Great Holy uh, Lent, we use the uh, liturgy of San Basil the Great. And the liturgy of San Basil the Great is a little bit longer 
longer than St. John the Chrysostomus. Like, it will be like between an hour and uh, 10 minutes or an hour 15 uh, minutes. And, and do, do Orthodox Christians believe that the real presence of Jesus Christ has entered into the Eucharist, into the, the wine and the, and, and the bread? Yeah, we believe that it's not wine and bread anymore. It's changed to the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, and because this is what he said, you know, when he said, take it, this is my body. But he did not say, take it, this is a symbol of my body. Take, take, drink, this is my blood. He did not say, take, drink, this is a symbol of my blood. He said, it is my body and it's my blood. So we believe that when we uh, have the Holy Communion, we are having the uh, body and blood of Jesus Christ, which he gave to his disciples at the Last Supper, and we still have that uh, what we called unbloody service, but we are having Christ himself. And you believe this is a holy mystery, that, that there is no human understanding of how this happens? Yeah, yeah, because it is a mystery by the Holy Spirit. Well, we're going to let that be the last word, because we're out of time. And uh, I appreciate you uh, spending this, this time with me. My guest has been Pastor Malicios Zafarin. He is the Senior Shepherd of St. George Orthodox Church in New Kensington, Pennsylvania. And the uh, church's website is stgeorgeorthodox.org. Thank you, Pastor. Enjoyed your, your time today. Thank you very much. God bless you. Reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is True News. Living a balanced life. Here's today's moment with Charles Stanley. God does not intend for us to be serious about everything in life. Because you see, if your life is lined up with the will of God, you're doing the will of God, He's living on the inside of you, and you're walking in His presence, then you ought to be happy. You say, well, there's some things in my life I can't be happy about. Okay, look, put them in the category they're in, and then count your blessings and think about all that God's doing for you. And have a peace in your heart and a joy in your heart. We've all been through heartaches and problems and times when we weren't happy and didn't feel happy and didn't have all that, didn't feel all that joy in our life. But deep down inside, there was something that overpowered all of that. And that was the joy of Jesus Christ living on the inside of us. Because you see, we as Christians, we ought to have the most fun. What I want you to recognize is simply this, that having fun and enjoying life and being happy is a part of God's plan and will and purpose for our life. Because you see, what you have to remember is this, if you get any of these areas of your life out of balance, then you've got major problems. We're talking about a balanced schedule, living out God's purpose to achieve and accomplish what He has for our life. Well, I hope you enjoyed the conversation with Pastor Zafarin. You know, each of us are are connected to different denominations and churches, and we have differences of opinion regarding theology and beliefs, but we must never allow ourselves to be divided. There is one holy Catholic and apostolic church in the world. It is the universal body of Jesus Christ. It is not one denomination. It is His body. And that church upholds and declares the Apostles' Doctrine the doctrine that has been preached to everybody, everywhere, all the time. I'm a firm believer that Christians should recite one of the ancient creeds, such as the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, or the Athanasian Creed. If you truly want to know what the word Catholic means, and I'm referring to Catholic with a lowercase c, I recommend you read the Athanasian Creed. Uh, You will be surprised at what the ancient church believed. And I hope you'll say, I believe it. At least I hope that's what you're going to say. It is a, it's an ancient creed, and it's one that you will uh, really treasure reading. And you ought to read it often. Got to go. We'll see you on the next edition of True News. We love you. Take care. Bye. Coffee. Coffee now! <laughs> <laughs> 